I stand as a true servant of the Most High God. The Joshua of this end time ordained and charged to bring the children of God into the promised city, New Jerusalem. And also as Peter, the rock in this end time upon which Jesus has built his church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I stand to preach the message of righteousness without which no man can see God. Repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Almighty God. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, another glorious day is here with us. Thanks be to God for bringing us together at his throne of grace and mercy. Unto the highest, Jehovah, be dominion and honor forever and ever. Unto the children of God, peace be multiplied in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are treating lesson two. Brethren, we are still on the topic. As the end of the world draws near, how prepared are you for the second coming of Christ? Brethren, last week, with the help of the Holy Spirit from biblical perspective, I revealed certain factors that have engulfed Christianity this end time. These factors have broken down many believers and thus... They have lost faith in Christendom and stopped going to church. Believers say factors such as barefaced swindling in the church, sexual harassment, abuse by these so-called men of God, blatant corruption in the church, magical feats in the church have taken over Christianity. However, from the Bible... I examine for us to understand that these happenings must take place in Christianity to fulfill the words of Christ. In Matthew chapter 24, the verses 24 and 25, the Bible admonishes us about the influx of false prophets to preach something different from what Jesus taught and perform great signs and wonders to deceive true children of God. I encouraged believers not to be troubled by the negativities that have crept into Christianity. Furthermore, I admonish that these happenings will continue to the end of time and nothing can be done to change them. But rather, true believers should find out what pleases the Lord and be obedient to them to make their election to heaven sure. In 1 John chapter 4, the verse 1, the Bible admonishes that as true believers of God, we should not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. The false prophets are here with us in this world. Therefore, Christians should be unfazed by their deeds. Let's proceed to today's lesson. Today's subtopic is the two ways in Christianity. Brethren, last week I promised to reveal a very important aspect in Christianity that has eluded many believers. Across the world, many believers are of the view that the word Christianity incorporates all those who profess to be followers of Christ, believe and read the Bible, and so any Bible-believing church is from the Lord. Brethren, do not be deceived that because you believe in the Bible and go to church, you are heaven-bound. No! 
In Matthew chapter 7, the verse 21, the Bible says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many believers are ignorant of the fact that Christianity is in two folds. This twofold Christianity is what Jesus taught us. They are the narrow way and the broad way. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, the verses 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Amen. Amen. Brethren, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, is telling us that there are two ways in our Christian journey. One that leads to eternal life, and another that leads to eternal destruction. Thus, the narrow way and the broad way. Furthermore, with the narrow way that leads to eternal life, only a few will find it. But the broad way has many people in it. That path leads to destruction. For Jesus said in John chapter 4, the verses 21 to 24, that the true worshipers of the Father will worship him in spirit and in truth. And in John chapter 6, the verse 63, he says his words are spirit and life. Let's read John chapter 4, the verses 21 to 24. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Also in John chapter 6, the verse 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Brethren, the narrow way Christianity is solely based on the word of God which is in spirit and in truth. And in the end, there will be eternal life. The question, therefore, is why should people serve God and end up being destroyed? Who will embark on a journey knowing very well that the path that he or she has chosen leads to destruction? My question again is how will you know that the path you have chosen will lead to eternal life or eternal destruction. Answering this question will let you know your results. That is, if you end up in heaven or the lake of fire. Brethren, we know Jesus Christ was sent by God to bring salvation to us. Also, Jesus is the only one name that God has given us through whom we must be saved. Now, let's read. From the book of John chapter 3, the verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish 
but have everlasting life. Also, from Acts chapter 4, the verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Brethren, let me state here that it is God that fashioned salvation and worked it through his son Jesus. So, brethren, let me ask, are you walking in the path of Jesus Christ or the other Jesuses? And how will you know you are walking the path of Jesus Christ or not? Let's allow the Holy Spirit to continue to lead us as we delve deeper into the subject. Brethren, the narrow way Christianity comes from Jesus and in it you serve God only according to God's word as Jesus taught and demonstrated. In this path, you don't serve God at your own convenience and terms. Adherence to God's word is total and absolute irrespective of how much it will cost you. On the other hand, the Broadway Christianity is infested with traditions and cultures of this world. Thus, you serve God at your own convenience. Any lifestyle goals. In the Broadway, worldliness, modernism, indecent way of dressing, and sexual immorality, sorcery, and all abominable acts are permitted. Why has it become so normal to fornicate and commit adultery in the house of God? Meanwhile, the Bible expressly says that fornicators, adulterers, and all those who are sexually immoral cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Let's be more scriptural from the book of Galatians chapter 5, the verses 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. As a believer, do you believe these words of the Apostle Paul? Are these acts not happening right in the church? Certainly. These acts are acceptable in the Broadway Christianity. Believers have been made to understand that because you are an Adamic human, you cannot stop sinning. How pitiful. Satanic hardcore agents, as part of their clandestine tactics, lure unsuspecting believers with sweet, soothing words that make them believe that God is so benevolent and loving that even if you sin, he will forgive you and love you more. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read 1 John chapter 3, the verses 9 and 10. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. Because he is born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Hallelujah! Why are we told by these so called men of God that because you are Adamic human, you cannot stop sinning? Mark this, these are the words of satanic hardcore agents. They are very much aware that the moment you stop sinning and walk according to the true word of God, 
You draw God into your life. And then you are heaven bound. It will be a failure on their part to allow you to know the truth. It is a compulsory mandate on their part to meet their target of deceiving true believers. They know that what they churn out is not the truth. Yet they say it with so much confidence that without the help of the Holy Spirit, you will fall prey to their evil machinations. Beware, brethren, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, blatant lies, deceit, swindling, false prophecies have flooded the church, particularly this end time. Yet, these so-called men of God look unconcerned. Yes, unconcerned. Because they are doing the bidding of their master, Satan. They have deceived and continue to deceive many in the broad way. Certainly, their end is distraction. As you are hearing me, what path are you walking on? Is it the narrow way from Jesus or the broad way which comes from Satan? Are you involved in these acts and still believe that you are walking in the path of Christ? Definitely not. Under no circumstance should you think that God will spare you from damnation if you sin. Shall we read from the Bible? That is the book of Matthew chapter 13, the verses 24 to 30. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed thirst among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the thirst also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it thirst? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest why ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. What Jesus meant in this parable is that he brought the narrow way gospel. The enemy, Satan, also sowing tears among the wheat, means he has brought another gospel, which is the broad way. The owner of the farm, allowing the tears to grow side by side with the wheat to harvest, represents the fact that satanic deception in the broad way will coexist side by side with the narrow way message of Christ till the judgment day. No wonder. The Bible says, judgment will begin at the house of the Lord. Let's read from the book of 1 Peter chapter 4, the verse 17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God. Brethren, most people enjoy professing Christianity and wish to be called Christians, but however, refuse to be obedient to what Christianity entails. I call such Christians of convenience. So the mere fact that you are well versed in the Bible and can recite scriptures does not qualify you to be a true believer. To qualify as a true believer, you must be totally obedient to God's word. That is, a doer of the word of God, irrespective of the cost. Hallelujah. 
Let's turn our Bibles to the book of James. James chapter 1. I'm reading from the verse 23 to 25. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way. And straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Also in Matthew Chapter 15, the verses 8 and 9. These people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Brethren, the Broadway Christianity is also known as another gospel. As Paul referred to in Galatians chapter 1, the verse 6 to 10. Let's read. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Brethren, here, Apostle Paul laments gravely that those who have moved away from the truth and turned to fables and what their itching ears want to hear should know that there are some out there who are perverting the gospel of Christ to their destruction. Furthermore, he warns seriously that if anyone comes to you, be it a human being, an angel from heaven, or even if he himself or any of the apostles comes to introduce something different from what they have already preached to you, to distort or corrupt the true word of God, that fellow should be accursed. Now the verse 10 says, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. The apostle Paul, a true servant of Christ, tells us that he will not preach what you want to hear, to be persuaded, but only what the Lord has given him to say, regardless. Brethren, whenever or wherever you see a church that condones and encourages these acts, know that you are not far away from the Broadway Christianity. Additionally, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, the verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Also, in Matthew chapter 7, the verse 20, the Bible says, Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. So, brethren, let me reiterate that you should not look far when you find these acts in Galatians chapter 5 
the verse 19 to 21 happening right in the church. You are walking the path of the Broadway. Brethren, once you decide to walk in the Broadway, that is to serve God at your convenience, I mean you go to church and still sin, deceiving yourself that you are a child of God. Jesus, through whom one goes to God, will deny you before his father. At that denial, know and understand that eternal damnation awaits you. The Bible says that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth forever and ever. Let's read from the book of Luke, chapter 13, the verses 22 to 28. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drank in thy presence. And thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves trust out. Brethren, if you find yourself in the Broadway, worry not, for there is still an opportunity for you to quickly flee into the narrow way. However, know that time is running out. Remember, it's extra time of the end time. Watch out! <laughs>